something that the Lord laid on my heart a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I want to share it with you. I want to share it with you what he showed me, what he spoke to me, and delivered to you. I believe it will change your life. I believe you'll look at things differently in prayer and uh, fasting, even when you combine that with your prayer. It's kind of a hidden component that can only come through revelation, uh, and it's powerful. I want to share it with you today. Amen. Amen. All right. You got that up there, brother? Yeah. Amen. Psalms 56, verse 8. This is David. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put thou my tears into thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? Question. Apparently tears are highly important and extremely significant to God. Amen. Amen. And David saw this. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I want to speak to you today from the topic of Lord, hear my tear bottle. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, let's pray right now. Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for all the souls that are here, Lord. And I thank you for those that are watching right now, God. I'm asking you, God, to go into the hearts and the minds of your people. No matter how far away they are to the east or to the west, God, or to the north or to the south, God, that you would go with them, God, into their hearts and minds. That you would feed them today, God. Amen. That they would hear what the Spirit says today, God. And that they would be able to use, Lord, your word, your revelation, 
and see your power and authority in your word today, God. Amen. I thank you for this opportunity, God, that you've given this church Amen. and these people, God, to hear you speak in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 All right. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There are three types of tears that I found through my study. And as I got deeper into the study, I found out that what I was reading was very typical of the word tears in the Bible. Knowing that they are highly important and significant to God, yeah. if I could have your attention for about 25 minutes, Amen. and you yeah. can take this out of here, I am telling you it will change your life. That's right. Amen. Amen. They're what we call basal tears. Not like the basal, B-A-S-I-L, but A-L. Uh, basal tears. Uh, and these tears have oil and mucus, uh, water and salt in the fluid. Uh, they are tears that keep your eyes from drying out. They're called basal tears. Amen. Amen. That's the first type of tear. The second type of tear is an irritant tear. Irritant tear. These are eye-washing tears. When you get something in your eye, whether it's a foreign object, uh, like smoke, or if you're a golfer and never been on the golf course and got a bug in your eye, uh, these are irritant tears. When this happens, your eyes are being washed by irritant tears. Amen. Amen. Basal tears, irritant tears. Amen. The third type of tear is an emotional tear. Tears that gush to strong emotions that we have. Sadness, grief, joy, anger. Your eyes tear up because of emotions that we have. Amen. Life can deal some things that will bring emotional tears. Amen? Basal tears, irritant tears, and emotional tears. And I want to speak to you today about tears. I want to speak to you about crybabies. I want to speak to you about tear bottles. And I want to speak to you about weeping. Amen? Amen. I see some smiling already. And the title for today's service is Lord Hear my tear bottles. Amen. 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 Hear my tear bottles. Yes. Some of you may be saying, well, how can you hear that? Before the end of the service today, you'll have revelation and you'll understand Amen. what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Yes. Tear bottles in the Bible were made of wine skins in Bible days. That's what they were made of. They would use these to preserve one's tears during times of grief or extreme pressure that life would bring upon them. Amen? Amen. They would take these tear bottles and put them up to their eyes and collect their tears. If you go online and you look for tear bottles, some will look like this. Some are very small, some are larger, but they're tear bottles. Uh, they would put them up to their eyes and collect the tears. They called these tear bottles. Amen? Amen? David talked about it in this psalm that's still up there. Psalms 56, 8. Apparently, David thought that God had a bottle to collect them in. David thought this. Amen? Amen. He said, put thou my tears into thy bottle. Amen. He was saying, Lord, don't you have a bottle to collect my tears? So apparently... Uh, David had a tear bottle. Amen? Amen. When David wrote this song, he was being pursued by Saul on one side, and he was surrounded by the Philistines on the other side. This was a very emotional time for David. It was a trying time, and David had his own bottle. Imagine being pursued from all directions. I am persuaded that David felt that God had a bottle for him. Amen? 
Because of how the scripture reads, David said, store up my tears in your bottle. It points to that God has a bottle. He felt that God counted these tears as highly important and highly significant to God. Amen? That's how David looked at this. Surely David knew, a man after God's own heart. In other words, tears carried a lot of weight with God. Amen. Tears Amen. carried a lot of weight with God. Yes. Amen. My observation about this generation and time that we live in is I believe that we're living in a time that churches and cities and even our home have become hardened and calloused or dry. Their prayers have become repetitious. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Amen. I've had conversations with some of you that say, I find myself praying the same thing and then I run out of what to say. Uh -huh. Repetitious prayers. Churches have this thing where they say a prayer and uh, they play three songs and then there's a 20 to 30 minute sermon and then there's a final song and then a dismissal prayer. Routine. Repetitious. Business as usual. Uh, that would fall under the category of hardened. Hardened prayers. Callous prayers. Dry prayers. Uh, rehearsed prayers. Your mindful. Your, your fleshful prayers. Your fleshly prayers. Not heartfelt prayers. Right. Heartfelt prayers. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. If you want to continue with divine intervention from God, then we need a restoration of our tears. Uh, I, I believe it would be a catalyst Amen. to the future growth of this church, to the future growth of your family and stability and a foundation to stand on. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's a sign of how God is going to move in our prayers. Yes. And before it's over, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I've witnessed it. I've been a part of it. But God showed me where I came from and reminded me. Amen? Amen. So I have spent two weeks pondering uh, the past services that we've had over the past two or three years here at Calvary Apostolic Church. And I've concluded that the quality of the powerful moves of God in our church have some way, somehow been because of the tears and the tracks that they leave on our face. Amen? Amen. Amen? Not just our church, but other churches have had powerful moves of God. And if they'll just trace it back to the tracks of their tears, they'll know where it came from. Amen? Amen. Amen. Not just our church, but other churches. And I believe that because of tears, God moves Amen. in circumstances. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. I've got to tell you, I was reminded of previous services where I had seen tears running down the faces uh, of my daughter, Ariel. I've seen tears run down the faces of Sister Brenda and Sister Rose and Brother Cook. I've seen you walk around here with handkerchiefs. Amen. Sister Becky, I've seen you cry that way in tears. Sister Kathy, I've seen tears. Amen. Sister Cook, I've seen those tears. Amen. My wife, I've seen those tears. Amen. Powerful things. Amen. I can see one getting ready to welt up. You know, Brother said before this, if you really want to feel something, close your eyes. Amen. Let God remind you of what he brought you through. Yeah. Let yeah. him remind you yeah. of where you were yeah. six months ago, yeah. one year ago, two years ago, three, yeah. ten years ago. Amen. Close your eyes and find a place where you can get your tears restored. Yes. Amen. I was sitting with Meg uh, about a week ago. This has already been on my mind. And she welled up in tears as I was sitting beside her. And I took my hand and I wiped the tears off of her nose. But somehow the tears came more alive. And I dig deeper into what was taking place 
in the mind of that child. Amen. Tears Amen. were falling down her face. Yes. I wanted her to know that tears have a voice. Yes. Amen. That God hears the tears in our voice, in, in our voices when we cry through tear bottles. Amen. Amen. Yes. Most people would think and, and, and appear to them that the tears are coming from their eyes because that's what it looks like. But those tears are not coming from their eyes. They're coming from their heart. Amen. And, and they're, they're elevated up into Amen. the eyes where they begin to, to pour out and gush. And I know that they come from the heart, not from the eyes. When I see tears and I hear cries, I know that God has somehow massaged somebody's heart. Right. Amen. That he's pricked them in the heart. Amen. That he's manipulated the heart and turned it. That God has created maybe a fracture or a brokenness in somebody's heart. Amen. Where he can mold it. Yes. He's touched them is what I'm saying. When I hear those cries, those are the things that I have resorted to thinking. And it's okay if we're sitting in church and you hear cries coming from the back or the front of the church. God is touching somebody's heart. Yes. Amen. Our generation needs a restoration. Our church needs a restoration of tears. Our family Amen. needs a restoration of tears. Our churches need a restoration of tears. Amen. Amen. You need a restoration Amen. of tears. Yes. Yes. Amen. Our prayers are too dusty and they're too rusty. Amen. Amen. They're, they're too callous. They're too dry. They're too repetitive. They become just phrases, just words. Right. Nothing more, just words. Repetition. They're not heartfelt is what I'm saying, amen? amen. They're not heartfelt. Just words. We somehow seem to think that the words that we pray will move God. The right words. If only I could come up with the right words, the right thing to say. I've been there. I've thought these things. But what moves God is not words. Our tears is what moves yeah. God. Amen. Amen. And I'll prove that to you this morning in just a few minutes. Like a baby that cries at night. The cry baby that cries with tears. Shaking and weeping and trembling. You know what I'm talking about Amen. parents. It, it's that <laughs> they can't even get their breath. Right. But what happens to the parents is they get up out of their bed. Tired from 12 hours of work yesterday to go get and rescue the baby from their tears. Amen. Amen. Tears move God. Yes, amen. 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 These tears and cries move the father and the mother to come to rescue them. Amen. Those, amen. those same emotional, heartfelt tears move. Our Heavenly Father. It moves Amen. your Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. You get in a little picture of where we're going with this this morning. Amen. Amen. Let me show you what Amen. God has been showing me. Would that be all right if I did that? Amen. 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 Psalms 34 Amen. and verse 18. Can we get that up there, brother? Psalms 34 and verse 18. You know, as I look in here and I see, I see full attention. Amen. Full attention. I don't see anybody's eyes wandering or, or, or nap jerking. Uh, full attention. There are people in here right now that tears are waiting to gush. I can see it in some of you. They're Amen. ready to pour out yeah. right now. Those are heartfelt tears that you're right. feeling. Amen. Right. Psalms 34, 18. Good, brother. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Amen. And saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Amen. The Bible said he is nigh. He is close to them. He's within your vicinity right now. Amen. Amen. Broken. When I looked up the word broken, it meant hurt. Crushed. Amen. Crushed. When I looked up the word heart, it wasn't heart. 
It meant mind and your thinking. Your thinking and your mind has been crushed. The old saying that you've heard, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But in this scripture, uh, what I really see is God seems to be saying, if it ain't broke, break it. Amen. Break it. Amen. See, like if, if you want to be close to God, they need to be broken. Amen. Don't, don't come in here with your haughty attitude. Don't come in here with yourself list, lifted up in pride. Uh, all closed up, not open to anything. Don't come in here like that. Amen. God's not looking for that. He'll pass right. you up. Amen. And in a minute, I'll share something with you that will scare you. It'll put the fear of God in you. Amen. Tears. That's what gets God's attention. Amen. If it ain't broke, break it. Amen. Amen. It says he's close to them that are broken and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. Amen. When I looked up the word contrite, it means being or been destroyed. Contrite. It means you've been crushed. It means that whatever was happening in you was a substance, and it actually means it was turned into a powder or dust. Amen. Amen. That's how crushed. God's looking for that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Crushed attitudes. Crushed personalities. Broken hearts. Amen? Yeah. Dust. Can you imagine that? They're not even particles. They're not even sawdust. They're smaller. They're dust or powder. Amen. Amen. It's like our spirit has melted. Crushed. Uh, we need to let God melt us so that he can mold us. Yeah. We need to be heated up that way so that we can become pliable. Amen. Let me tell you something about clay. Any potter will tell you that clay is not moldable until moisture, moisture touches this clay. Right. Until moisture touches, then it becomes pliable. Any potter will tell you that. In Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 3, he said, Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Amen. He said he went down to the potter's house. The next verse reads, And the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again. Another Amen. vessel. Another vessel with the same clay. <laughs> Me and you, the same clay. He said, I'm going to redo it. Yeah. And it seemed good to the potter to make it, the Bible says. It seemed Amen. good. That's the transformation. That's the metamorphosis that God can perform if we'll just be pliable. Amen. That's right. Amen. If we'll just release some heartfelt tears when we pray. Amen. Let me tell you something. Amen. Uh, if you're not in Monday night prayers, then you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. But Monday night prayers, I I've seen them become selective when we come in here. Oh, we'll pray hard and draw tears for this person, but we won't draw hard and pray and cry tears for that person. But if it's my daughter or my son, boy, I will cry tears. You're missing it. Amen. Because we are to love our brother as we love yes. ourselves. Amen. When we can put others, others instead or in front of us. Amen. God will move, especially when you add moisture, tears to those prayers. Right. Amen. 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 We need to be heated up to become pliable. Yes. Amen. Nevertheless, not my will, Lord, but thy will yes. be done. Melt me. Yes. Mold me, then make me yes. again. Amen. 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 I see heads nodding. Nobody's, nobody's falling asleep, and I love that. Because that means that we're gonna we're gonna increase from today's service. Yes. There's gonna be great increase today. Amen. 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 A Monday night prayer. We should have need of all the Kleenex boxes in the sanctuary. Every one of them should be needed or used. 
Amen. Lord, restore our tears. Amen. Yes. Not yes. only does the Spirit purge us. What do you mean purge, uh, Pastor? I mean, not only does it cleanse us of our filth. Right. It purges us. It sanctifies us. Right. It sets us apart. Amen. Amen. But the washing of those tears creates a newness in the spirits of the children of God. Amen. Amen. You could say the Lord washed my eyes with tears that I may see. Amen. Amen. The broken heart that I had was good for me, Lord. It was good for me, Lord. Uh, how you tore it apart and you looked inside of me and found pride and found haughtiness and found selective Amen. prayers. Amen. Amen. The Lord, I beg, to sweep away the things that make me blind, God. Sweep them away. Amen. Get them out of me. Amen. Make me pliable, God. Make Amen. me understand Amen. what's best for me, God. Amen. 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 He washed my eyes with tears that I might see. Amen. Amen. I want to show you something that most have never seen. But I believe that the Lord showed me for such a time as this. Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Amen. Amen. 1 through 6. I'm going to come down here. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. He cried. Everybody say cry. Cry. Also in my ears with a loud voice saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near. Even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Picture that. Put that in your mind. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. These are things that were ready to kill. And one man among them was clothed with linen with the riders in corn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. Everybody say, of the house. Of the house. And he called to the man clothed with white linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. Amen? Amen. Amen? And the Lord said unto him, He said, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry. Where did he do this? In the house. Right. In the house. In this house. He said, set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said, in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Kill him. Kill him. If they don't have that mark, kill him. What mark? The mark of tears, the mark of crying. Kill them, he said. Smite them. Let not your eye spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, children, both maids and little children, and women. He said, slay them, kill them. But come not near, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. What mark, Pastor? The mark that said that they wept and they cried. Don't touch those. They belong to me. I've gathered their tears in my tear bottle. And begin. Begin where? In my sanctuary. In my sanctuary. Right here. Not in your home. Not in your car. But right here. He said you begin in the sanctuary and begin to separate them. Amen. And don't touch them. Mine. 
And they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Amen. Amen. It begins right here, Saints. That's right. Amen. It begins right here. Right here. Separate them. He highly favors those Amen. that cry tears. Amen. Highly favors. Right. Right. You know what else? According to that scripture, protection. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> protection. Protection over your children. Yes. Protection over your wife. Protection over your husband. Protection over your grandparents. Your brothers and your sisters. He said, don't touch them. They're mine. Everybody else, smite them. Amen. Amen. In 2 Kings, you don't have to put it up there, brother. In 2 Kings, Chapter 20. It's the story of King Hezekiah. And I know a year or so ago we talked a little bit about him for those of you that remember. He was sick to death. The king was sick to death. He was a man of God, the Bible says. And then a man was sent to him, a man of God, a prophet. And he told King Hezekiah, he said, Get your house in order. Because you're going to die. Amen. You're going to die. Get your things in order. For us, that would be get your will ready. Start executing the things that you need to take care of before you leave here. Begin that. And the Bible says that when King Hezekiah had received this from the prophet, that he turned his face to the wall. And that represented that he got serious about himself. Amen. Amen. He didn't want to see nobody. He didn't want to talk to nobody except God. He turned his face to the wall and prayed. Amen. Before the man of God with a message had left the corridor of that building, God spoke to him. Right. Amen. And he said, turn ye around and go back and tell him he will live. He's going to live. Amen. Why? Because he prayed and the Bible says he wept. That's right. And God tells him, hear me now, he said, because I heard your prayer. Amen. That's why I'm going to let you live. Because I heard your prayer and saw yeah. your tears. That's right. Amen. He said, I'm going to let you live. He gave King Hezekiah 15 more years. That's right. That's right. Why did he do that, Pastor? Because of his prayers. They included tears. Amen. God hears the voice of your tear bottles. Amen. He hears them. It's as if though he was saying, your tears have a voice. Amen. 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 It doesn't say the last hour, silence will fall. Prayers and the tears of the saints will come down. That's right. Amen. It is powerful. Amen. Give me Psalms 126 and verse 5. Amen. You got it, brother? The Bible says, They that sow in tears. Amen. Shall reap in joy. Amen. It, 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 he didn't say sow in seed. He said that sow in tears. Yeah. Amen. What do you mean sow, Pastor? He planted. 
tears. He produced tears. And when you look up the word tears, it means weep or wet. Shall reap in joy, the Bible says. Amen? Yes. Give me Mark chapter 9, and we can stand. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter 9 and verses 20 to 29. Amen. Amen. This morning as I sat trying to put an end to this, I remembered a scripture that I've had conversations with many people about. Was Saul saved, or Esau saved, or did he not make it? And everybody would say, the Bible says that he sought repentance with tears, right? And that he couldn't find it. So many would leave and say, well, Saul was, he didn't make it. He couldn't repent. He couldn't find repentance. Right? And it's always puzzled me a little bit about that because I would talk to my wife and say, you know, Saul was blessed a lot after that. He was blessed with many things. And him and his brother met the river uh, hashed it all out his brother received him and forgave him but it always went back to you know he, he, he sought tears but found no repentance so it, it kind of puzzled me a little bit about it and I think I have more clarity today now, this was not part of the sermon but it was a revelation as I sat there this morning praying to God with tears. And I felt that he answered me. Amen. When you look up the word tears in the Bible, and it's in there many times, but I noticed that there were three different meanings to the word tears. And when I looked up these three meanings, one was found for those that use a lexicon, lexicon number 1144. 1832, different meaning, and 1058, which is the one brother quoted in Esther today, which is the exact one that I had in my notes. So brother was already talking about my sermon today. Those three meanings of tears meant different things. But when I looked up the scripture in Hebrews where it said that he sought repentance and found it not, sought it with tears, I looked up that word. And let me just say that in 1832, lexicon number 1832, tears meant exactly that, tears, in 1832. And when I looked it up in the book of Esther, it meant weeping, the weeping that we do in grief because she was grieved about what was fixing to take place. She was bitter. She, she fell into, uh, it, she, humility came upon her, uh, and also joy after, you know, the scepter and all that. Uh, and that was uh, lexicon 1058. So there's two of them. But this third one that I found in Hebrews, lexicon 1144, uh, and it's pronounced dekru, dekru in the Greek, dekru. When I looked up that word tears, these are the tears that Esau cried. It said, uncertain affinity uncertain affinity those are the tears that Esau wept now I don't know about you but anytime I see or hear somebody say uncertain that means they're not sure uncertain tears in other words when I look deeper it said not able to be relied on God couldn't rely on the tears that Esau was shedding. 
because they were of an uncertain affinity. Amen. When you look up the word affinity, it means a spontaneous sympathy for someone or something. I came to the conclusion that Esau was crying the wrong tears. Right. He was uncertain about his own repentance. That's why he found it not. Because God bottles all the tears. He knows the ones that are heartfelt, the ones that are right. emotional. Amen. Amen. Yes. He said those are uncertain affinity tears. Amen. That's not what God's looking for. Amen. He's looking for the emotional ones. Yeah. Amen. The heartfelt ones. Amen. 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 The love, the one that, that just fills your heart with Amen. love. Amen. So I felt like I had more clarity. Clarity about that now. Amen. I don't want to be uncertain about my tears. Right. There are some people out there that can make themselves cry. I can't do that. Right. Something touches me. Something gets me right. and I begin to cry. Amen. Amen. There's no uncertainty about my tears. There shouldn't be no uncertainty about your tears. Right. Amen. 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 They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. The Bible says. You got uh, Mark chapter 9, brother? Yeah. Verse 20 through 29. Amen. Let me just get to it here. You hear where we're going with this, saints? Amen. Amen. Are we learning something today? Amen. Listen to me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, Jesus says, How long is it ago since this came unto him? He's speaking of the possessed child, and he said of a child. And oft times it have cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, at least have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. In verse 24, the Bible says, and straightway. The father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Cried out in tears. Amen? Amen. It was tears that moved God to release the spirit that had come upon this child. Amen? Amen. You want to know what else it affected? Go to verse 26. In verse 25 it says, When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. This was after the tears. In verse 26 it says, And the spirit cried, even the devil cried, even the spirit that went into that man cried, because tears even moved to them. And rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. All because Amen. of tears. Immediate answers when tears, heartfelt tears come. Immediate answers. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? We need a restoration of tears. Yes. Amen. Come on up, brother. We need a restoration of tears. Amen. Amen. We got we, we, we need God to emotionally move us yes. to tears. Yes. Amen. Break us. 
thank you for breaking me, Lord. Amen. Thank you for breaking me. And now, God, reposition me and restore my prayer with tears. Yes. In other words, melt me, mold me, and make me. Amen. Kind of like M&M's with an extra M. Right. Make me new again. Amen. Amen. In Psalm 6, verse 8, I'll read it to you. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. For the Lord hath heard the voice of my weeping. Amen. That scripture says that tears have a voice. Amen. Yes. Right. Weeping. Yes. It's almost as if my daddy's bigger than your daddy, devil. Amen. Weeping. And they left. Amen. Amen. I was thinking back. And many of you have heard me say this to you. If I brought you into this church and I have helped you and been in your home and sat with you, then you have heard this from me, I promise you. I've spoken to you. I've spoken everybody that I've been involved with and one to the Lord. And I've always said this. When you first come to God, He's going to do everything that you, that you ask Him to do. That's right. I said in the first year, maybe nine months, He will answer every prayer, Rose, and he will talk to you more than he ever has. And you'll hear his voice and you'll yes. feel his presence. I've said that to you. I've said that to you. I said that to Kenny. She was with at the time. I, I've said that to them. If you don't hear anything else that I say, remember that I told you. And after nine months to a year, God's going to pull away. Because he wants you to draw nigh unto him. He wants a closer and deeper relationship. Amen. Amen. And I remembered this morning while sitting at my table. That when I came into the church from the moment that I walked in and sat in the pew. I would begin to cry. Yes. My first visit. My second visit. My third. It was so bad that I would leave church with headaches. I almost couldn't take it because the headaches hurt so bad. Because of my crying. Amen. Because of the tears yes. that I wept. And God Amen. told me this morning. You were wrong when you told him nine months to a year. But I knew that your tears wouldn't fall. Like they did when you first came to me. Your tears quit coming in the abundance that they came in the beginning. They quit coming. I had to pull away. Because you were lacking heartfelt tears. You got comfortable. Amen. You got comfortable. I've never left you. I'll never forsake you. Amen. Amen. But you quit putting heartfelt tears into your prayers. That's why I answered you on the call every time. And I'm telling you right now, God would answer my prayers in one second. I would no longer say the prayer and my phone would ring. It's, I don't know what you did, but man, it's done. It's finished. Because we have a zeal and a boldness. And we're so broken and contrite when we come to God. Yes. That it's easy for us to get full of pride because we're church people. We can point fingers at people. Talk about them. Sin separates you from God. That's right. But if you can get back to first, first base. Let's go back to first base. Amen. 
He'll answer your prayers just like He did in the scriptures that I showed. And when the judgment comes in the sanctuary, don't touch that brother. He's got my mark from weeping on him. And don't touch that sister. Because when she worships, she weeps. Right. Amen. And don't touch that little girl back there. Because I can still see the tracks of her tears. Amen. Amen. We become too repetitious and too comfortable. Amen. On Monday nights, I implore you close your eyes. For some of us, just think back to when God could have taken you. Right. Maybe it was a sickness. Right. But he spared you because of your tears. Amen. Maybe it was when they held a gun and pointed it at you. And God said, I saw your tears. They're in my body. If we could just go back and find in our memory of our past a circumstance or a place where God spared us and answered us because of our Amen. weeping yes. and because of our tears because he heard our prayers but he saw our tears Amen. how many remember the woman God's good because he just reminded me of this. how many remember the woman in the Bible that took her hair and washed the feet of Jesus with tears. Amen. Some of the most renowned scholars the most highly educated and smartest people believe that this woman had a tear bottle she pulled it out and washed his feet with her tears and used her hair to wash him. You know, and it makes sense to me because it would take more than these tears. But she had a revelation. She knew what it meant to have a tear bottle. She knew what it meant to collect them. And she knew that God also had a tear bottle and collected them. He said, one day, you won't need this no more. You won't need those tears. You won't have pain. You won't have strife. I'll wipe all those tears away. And those things get perfect. But until then, Amen. Lord, yes. here the voice of my tear bottle. Amen. 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 God bless you. The altar is open. Amen. It represents a restoration of your tears. Lord, restore back to me. The restore means that you once had it. And then you lost it, and you're saying, God, I want that back. Yes. He's able. And you know why he'll do it? Because maybe we didn't know the importance of our tears until today. Right. Amen. We overlooked it. Nobody ever told me about those tears. Nobody ever showed me. Nobody ever gave, gave me scriptures. No, everybody had to brought me to the light and the revelation of what tears are. Lord, restore my tears. Amen. And watch what God does when you open your mouth and pray a prayer for something that you need right now. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Churches, he said, repent. 
Let's do the first verse. We have a song that you used to sing a lot years ago. It says, Take me back to that old land park. I think sometimes we need to revisit that old landmark. That place where you first came to God. When you first prayed at the altar and asked God for forgiveness, mercy, and the tears that you shed at that altar. Thank you. 